Welcome to the Iron Bank. Please, sit. I cannot give you back your homes or restore your dead to life, but perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is a subject that goes unnoticed quite often both in the books and in the show. I'm talking about the Iron Bank of Bravos. The Iron Bank is by far the most powerful financial institution in the land. It is said the wealth of the Iron Bank is more than the banks of the eight free cities combined. Basically any big loan needed in Westeros and Essos alike comes from the Iron Bank of Bravos. Even the crown finances from the Iron Bank. Actually, in season 1, when Ned Stark becomes Hand of the King, he finds out the crown owes the bank millions of gold dragons. By the way, gold dragons are currency, not actual dragons. Anyways, the Iron Bank of Bravos was founded very long ago, even before the Doom of Illyria. Successful traders and craftsmen got together and founded the establishment, and since then it has been funding kings, wars, and other endeavors for centuries. The bank has a common saying as well, the Iron Bank will have its due. Unlike some groups or businesses that are considered pushovers, especially for the crown to take advantage of, the Iron Bank is pretty much like the faith in the way that they do not take orders from royalty or noble houses. This is proven because Tywin Lannister, a very rich man, even so rich that the crown owes him millions of gold dragons as well, is fearful of the Iron Bank. He initially comes off as not too worried about the debt that is owed to the bank, but at Joffrey's wedding when speaking to Elena Tyrell, he realizes that the bank will become impatient and take matters into their own hands, thus funding the crown's enemies as an insurance policy to put someone on the throne who has a better shot at paying off the debt. This is exactly what happens when we see Stannis Baratheon asking for financial support when he and Davos Seaworth arrive at the bank for a meeting. The Iron Bank decides to fund his claim so he can buy more soldiers because they believe Stannis was more loyal than the Lannisters to pay off the crown's debt. However, Stannis is defeated and dies in the Battle of Winterfell, leaving the Iron Bank with a lost investment. This is important to note, the Iron Bank is keen on finding the best opportunities to allow them to be repaid. They are not above funding enemies of the throne if they are not receiving their investments back. Like I said before. The Iron Bank will have its due. This is quite interesting, because if we take a step back and look at how banks operate, we know that they always win in the end, meaning they get back what they give out in one way or another. We know that George R.R. R. Martin has based much of his story off of real events in history, real places, real people, and real scenarios. If this bank in Bravos is really the financial authority of the known world, then they obviously have the means to ultimately get the outcome that they seek. So what is that outcome? Well, to follow suit with what the bank and its leaders have been doing for centuries, I would say their goal is to grow and prosper. They are obviously not receiving the payments they need from the crown to keep from funding other parties with claims to the throne. And we can almost guarantee that Cersei will not start paying back the loans now that she is the ruler at King's Landing. It seems plausible that the Iron Bank will search for a new person to fund in hopes of one day receiving their money back. The obvious candidate here is Daenerys Targaryen. Not only has she found great wealth on her own from conquering the slave cities, but she has the biggest cult following. Because of her dragons, her abilities, and her method of ruling, the Iron Bank would see a huge benefit in funding her journey to overthrow Cersei. Looking from the outside in, if someone owed me money, I would choose Daenerys over anyone to get it back. The bank wouldn't even have to shell out much money in supporting her because she already has so many additional tools for war that others don't have. Anyways, this is my take on the Iron Bank of Bravos. A lot of us forget about the financial stake that is involved within the story and I wanted to briefly share what I can foresee from the bank. This may not be a mind-blowing theory 
that if a bank was to support someone, it would likely be Danny, but I feel the show hasn't included much about the bank, especially recently. Let me know what you think is going on with the Iron Bank, and if it will even pop up anymore in the show. Thanks for watching guys, be sure to drop a like on the video if you enjoyed anything you've seen here. And lastly, thanks to all my new subscribers. Just in case you don't know, I try to upload daily. I really appreciate all the support everyone, take care, and I will see you tomorrow.